right now the other guys are in here we are it is november 18th is that right functional strength training one hour at home workout three more of these we're going to ease it into simple squats leave them up and hit your catapult don't underestimate the value of the catapult push your butt back land on your heels squeeze your shoulder blades together pull your chin into your neck Get your spine long and tall and find those glutes and squeeze that core. Squeezing the core as you squat. There's good safety movements, safety maneuvers, the navel draw in maneuver. Let's, uh, let's, go, let's go down and pulse and then we'll come up and get these arms out of here and we'll do a little bit of uh, side to side stuff because we love lateral motion. Warm those up good. We'd have to do a hundred to warm them up as much as a half a minute of this will do. And explode them out. And let's get a couple of side steppers. Whew. Yes, it's possible to get tired of squats in your at-home workout. But what are you going to do? If you don't squat, you're going to lose your butt. <laughs> I can make that a meme, huh? If you don't squat, you're going to lose your butt. Squat and lunge, that is. We got pendulum squats today. All right, let's count these down. Four, squeeze them back. Three, squeeze them back. Two, and one, and let's get the upper back. We're gonna start with these slow high rows. High rows are great. Keep that chin tucked. Go ahead and throw your head forward a few times. That's the untrained tendency, but we're not like that anymore. We keep it back. We go to W's. <clears throat> we go to W's. The tendency, the untrained tendency is to pop ribs, right? Pop your ribs and then don't pop your ribs anymore. Keep those down, squeeze the abs, pull them right back. And now let's put some ferocity into those. Squeeze them back, let's pulse them back. Pulse, pulse, pulse. That's my upper mid back. Let's do that pulse again three times here. Pulse, pulse, pulse. We might do face pulls today, which are not super pleasant, but man, they're good for posture. All right, big circles, actually medium circles. Still squeezing that upper mid back together because that's our postural pal. Who's your postural pal? Oh, that would be my upper mid back. Thank you for asking. Bringing them around, tighten them up. They're still not tired enough, are they? Let's do some singles. Open up that rib cage. I'm afraid we gotta do scap circles. Until we're sweating from our upper mid back and shoulder complexes, we haven't really warmed them up enough. So it's kind of an elementary move, but not really. Let's do it. Let's do the back wall. Stand sideways, drop that shoulder down, both of them, and back. Keep your chin tucked. Let's go up and down six times. Thinking about your good posture, your rib cage down, and feeling your lubricated scaps on your rib cage. All right, keep them up. Now it gets tricky. They're shrugged and they're forward and back. A little bit of internal and external rotation in the hands. How are you doing? Keeping that ribs, rib cage controlled, head controlled. All right, let's punch them together almost like you're going to pinch something between your shoulders up here and go down and up. How's your thoracic? How's your neck? How's those mid-back muscles stretching and warming up? Ah, oh, they're feeling good. Leave them down now and back and forth at the bottom. Did you see that rib pop? Oh, egregious error. Control it, control it, bring it down. Squeeze them back, throw them forward, squeeze them back. I think that warms you up more than anything. All right, ballistics, let them swing. Zoom, zoom. We're gonna do some standing abs crunches. Don't laugh, they really work. Good for balance and everything. Warm them up, we're gonna go eight forward, and then eight to the side, and then eight at the 45 degree plane. These are sagittal, baby. Right down that front plane. I lost count, but that feels like eight. Let's take them out to the side. Oblique it. Hike your hip. Fire your quadratus lumborum. Quadratus lumborum, isn't that a poem? Squeeze them, and squeeze them, 
Get that elbow to the knee. All right, 45. ka -choom. Ka -choom. If you can actually squeeze that elbow to that knee, using your obliques, man, you know where your abs are. Let's hold it. Balance, squeeze it. That's my abs doing that. That's my crushing that walnut with my abs right there. Two more. <clears throat> One and two and stretch it for about two breaths. Three breaths before we get to the other side. Oh, we are warming up, I can tell. Sagittal, sagittal plane. We live in a sagittal world. Let's work in the sagittal plane. <clears throat> How's your abs? How's your navel squeeze? How's your spinal flexion? That's about eight. Let's go to the side, what do you say? Hip hiker. <clears throat> your quadratus lumporum is a hip hiker. I think that's the first line in the poem. Squeeze it and find that 45. Using obliques, rectus abdominis. Mm, I'm dumping into this leg because I'm gonna stand in balance, get ready. Ooh, I didn't have it. Squish it, squish it from right there. That's your abs, that's your abs is working. Oh, all right, two more. One, and two and bend it open those obliques back up again i'm going to set you to faux jump roping while i escape to lose a shirt pick your feet right together pack your shoulders back and jump rope i'll be back don't think i'm gone it's just that we're warming up from all that mid back work right that's your secret mid-back beef all right a little reactive impact side to side and let's do some calf raises for balance practice and calf musculature hinge them back jack them up we won't do too many but they're really good for us and then we're going to stretch those calves because that's really good for us too Super tall. Let's get four on this side. Almost all left leg. Jacking it up high. Working those calves. Four on this side now. One, two, three, and four back here. That's my calves. And then we're going to stretch the shenanigans out of them. But not until we get these four. One, and then four more on both of them with a really tight squeeze and tall balance. I'm on both calves now. Four times, let's hold the last two. That's two, here we go. Hold it. Super tall, squeeze your calf balls. The balls of your calf muscle. And one more of those. Oh, super squeezy, super bouncy. That's pretty cool. All right, let's hit the wall. Stretch them for a good Six exhales, what do you say? Staple that heel down, lean the hip towards the floor, lock your leg out, we're stretching the gastrocnemius. That's the big calf ball, the upper part of the calf. Continue to fall towards the wall, keep your head back, look at the wall, exhale. Two more, and switch them out. Calves need a lot of stretching, ease into it. Slowly increase the push, drive through the heel, drop the hips lower and lower. Last exhale. All right, stretch number two, calf number one, switch them out. Bend that knee, work that ankle. Bring the knee close to the floor. See if you can feel the Achilles tendon and soleus, that's your lower part of your calf down there. Two more exhales there, dig it down. Stretching your plantar fascia, who wouldn't want to do that? And switch them out, bend that other knee, dip it down. This is an abbreviated version of a plantar fasciitis cure. If we're not curing it, we're preventing it. Take that knee a little deeper, torture the front of your ankle. Three, two, one, super good. Walk them off, and I like to rotate them after that. Poor things. 
get some juice back into that calf joint. <clears throat> Recover some of that soft tissue that we tortured with that fierce angle. Let's grab our sticks, get some shoulders once again. So those scapula rotators really warmed up that shoulder beef. This is pretty easy now to do that. Look at that. The first one, I didn't even pop my ribs. I almost always pop my ribs on the first one, just to show what that looks like. That's what that looks like. It's not the best, but since your stick's nice and light, it won't kill you. It's just practice and awareness, practice and awareness, practice and awareness. Head stuck, arms stiff. That's five of those. Now we're gonna do a single. Keep this one steady. Take that one up and over and back down. Five times, six if you really need it. Feel that coming from the root of your arm, which is your scapula. That's four, I think. That's five, and I'm gonna get that other side. <clears throat> Super stiff arms, nice. Lots of room for style on this one. You can definitely go but remember one hand should be still while the other one's cooking. Pretty fun. All right, let's do some hinges. Put this thing back, tuck your chin, squeeze your abs, push your butt back, hinging into a good morning. Yes, you could do this with a barbell if you have one. Have you seen the at-home exercise kits that are available now? There's one the other day I saw, what was it called, the mirror or something like that. And it's got motion tracking. So they're showing you a guy on the screen that's telling you what to do. And then next to him, they're showing a picture of you that's all digitized and motion tracked. And trying to help you to correct your form. It's pretty intense. Stay down, stretch long, tuck your chin, lengthen your spine. Is that your hammies? How's your hammies? That's my hamstrings. I like them. All right, two more, squeeze it up once, boom. Squeeze it up twice, boom, and let's take them out super wide because we all need a little groin stretch in the morning. Let's get about nine of these, pushing them back. Do feel that butt sway back. Look how cool that looks. In the back here, you should be able to tap your toes. There's something pretty great about that position. I'm gonna say that's five. I'm gonna stay down on seven, which is right about it now. Pushing my butt back, feeling that hamstring more, and then that hamstring more. Squeezing that ground a little bit. Pondering going wider. Last two, squeeze them up. Notice on this wide stance, we tend to be duck butt at the top, don't do it. And walk them in. Super good. I believe it's time for our yoga push-ups. We can never get tired of yoga push-ups, can we? Remember, if you're taking it easy on your shoulders, I notice my shoulders feel older sometimes these days. I have no problem doing the push-up part on my knees the first couple, then coming up to plank it out, and then driving overhead, which is largely about shoulder care and shoulder mobility and then bring it back down. I will count 10 of these. You can do them as you like, but do keep your attention on your body mechanics and the purpose of this amazing warm-up move, which is canon in the Vibrant Fitness Library. Yoga push-ups, dropping heels, stretching calves, stretching hamstrings, driving shoulders overhead, canon. Knees down. And if you're feeling mighty and strong, you can do a few without putting the knees down. It's your yoga push-up, not mine. Three more. Make them yours. How's your head position? How's your adduction? How's your posterior chain? How's your anatomical vocabulary? Second to last, boom. <clears throat> and last one for all y'all. Drive them up. Feel the hands, feel the glutes, feel the scaps. And then let's kick that seamlessly into our 
yoga inspired world's greatest stretch. This is gonna be stomp once, <coughs> stomp twice until we get five on each side of the mountain climber portion of the vibrant world's greatest stretch sequence. <coughs> That's two, two. <coughs> Long from the top of the head through the heel. That's three, three. I like to hit the pike up in between it every time because it's a pike up. <clears throat> I believe that's five, five. And I'm gonna throw the first one up here towards you, foot by the hand, long from the top of the head through the heel, chest down a little bit, and thoracic rotation, first of three. Hold that for a second, bring it back down. How long can you be from your heel to the top of your head? How's your head position? Watch that hand with your eyeballs. Feel the pec stretch. Get long and tall there. And then this is going to come down outside of the foot. And we are going to do the posterior chain stretch, which is part A here. And part B here with the toes up and the spine around. Part A, extension. Part B, flexion. You get five of these on the side <clears throat> that always make you more ready for whatever. This is an inhale here. This is an exhale here. Navel to the spine. That's four. Hold them a little longer each time. And on five, really hold it out. Drive your lumbar up to the sky. Raise this toe. Feel this functional butt beef line stretching from the back of your knee to the nape of your neck. Push your butt side to side, feel all those fascias and tissues stretching, and then set your base of support to come up into a textbook lunged hip flexor. Really, the leg that is back is the arm that needs to be up. If you like them both, you can do it. Lean and rotate and dip, and don't be ducked in that lumbar because you're missing that hip flexor stretch. And then we're gonna go down and get the other side. Bring it on down. So that other foot up by the hand. See if you like where you are. Thoracic rotation three times. For the happiness of your T-spine. I like to inhale up there. Exhale down here. See where you feel that when you're down. Inhale up there. Exhale down. Now we're set up for posterior chain stretch. You can do that from a different angle. I can have this hand inside this foot or outside the foot. <clears throat> it's good to mix it up. See if you can feel how it stretches you different. Second of five posterior chain stretches. <clears throat> oh, switching it out. There's four, really feel that in the ham. See where you feel it, where you need it. Here's my five, I'm gonna stay up there and lean into it and exhale, round out. I'm gonna set my base of support wide enough and chest deep enough to come up without overextending my lumbar. The leg that is back is the hand that is up because we're looking for this long fascia line. Goes all the way down and then bend and rotate. I love that hip flexor. Mm, super good. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna do pairs. Exercise pairs. Pendulum squats versus various poles. The third round of hinged poles is going to be face poles which is definitely an exercise to rave about, even though it's not altogether pleasant. We use a grocery bag for that with some weight inside it. If you don't have a grocery bag, you can use very small dumbbells or bean cans, but I'd recommend you get one of these because it's an amazing move. We won't do this for a little while, but that's what it looks like. I'll talk you through it. First thing we're gonna do is pendulum squats, which I'm gonna swing pretty heavy. We haven't done these for a little. Pendulum squats are kind of like a kettlebell swing with dumbbells. I'm gonna mix that up with push press. 
12s are not too much, but if you haven't done these for a while, eights, sixes, tens can be great. It's a hinge affair. So a couple of things I like to do to show you how this feels. One is this um, dumbbell deadlift, because it's kind of like a dumbbell deadlift that we're doing, but it's also kind of like a kettlebell swing. Now this is what I call a two bucket swing, where I'm not hinging at the hips, but it's pretty enjoyable to do. Talk about a weird bearing exercise. Can you feel that compressing your shin bones and your ankles and your feet? Now add to that, a little bit of hinge and use that butt coming forward to kick those up higher. See the kettlebell likeness of that? That's a kettlebell like movement. And it's totally fun. Second round of that's going to be a push press, which looks a little bit similar, but it's actually quite different. But pendulum squats first and then lawnmowers. Y'all know lawnmowers, but I'll get you ready. Do your bucket swing until you're ready to really kick these things, which is in three, two, one. So when I'm back, it's heels, boom. The bells don't actually go overhead. They end up up above 45 degrees up. And it's kind of understated how it gets into your core. I like my feet fairly narrow to avoid all chances of clobbering them with those dumbbells, which is also one of the big differences from a kettlebell swing in which my feet are wide. But it's a great chance to keep your chin tucked and your spine straight and to compress your bones. And it's kind of easy until it's not. <clears throat> feel how those weights feel. Think about if you want to use heavier ones next time we're here. Play with how much you bend your knees. Straighter knees keep more in the hamstrings, which is a good thing. But it's also fun to kind of bend them and feel that more complex hip hinge. Five, four, three, two, and rest them. All right, we're gonna drop one down here. We're gonna set up our long lunge lawnmower position, which is a good base of support. Chest square to the floor, internal rotation back here, aiming into that one. Let's start with low rows close to the spine. That is the dumbbells parallel to my spine. I'm pulling through my shoulder blade, and now I'm going to open that belt up 45 degrees off the spine, so it looks like that still pulling. I'm gonna dip this down just a little bit. And we're gonna switch sides in seven seconds. If that's feeling safe, get a couple of high rows. Got the elbow and the dumbbell 90 degrees off the spine. Switch your row. Low row. We all know low row. Elbow close to the body. How's your head position? Is that dumbbell light enough that you could go, look, ma, no hands? Feel that load on that glute, on that heel. That's so good for you. All right, 45, take it off the body. Get it out of here, you're staying down. I'm just showing you what I'm talking about. Elbow like that, and chest stand square, and then if you're game, go to a high row. Oh, we're out of time, just when it was getting fun. All right, push press, we're going overhead. Um, 12s are very chunky. If you've been working out, you might like 12s. If not, you might like eights. I like these vertical like this. I want to line up my forearms with my knees, come down into a baby squat, and drive those right overhead. This is one of the, oh, you know, I love them all. But what's great about this is it looks super simple, but there's a lot of great body mechanics going on. You got your tall squat, you got your abs engaged, you got your elbows lined up, and you get to watch when you're overhead, how's that lumbar? Are you ducking butt? That's wrong, don't do that. Keep it square and keep cooking. This will get your cardio going. You can go a little deeper, Sarah. I know it's your first day back. You were probably sore. Second day back. You were probably sore after Tuesday, huh? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, hold them up. Way to the sky, ribs down, abs tight, glutes tight. Seven, six, let's get two more pumps. Boom, one, and boom, two. Super good. Heavy pants with the very same dumbbells. It's a hinged pole affair. Nice and tall, shoulders back, chin tucked. Hinge it down, and the same row mechanics that we were doing. You're gonna do low rows for a little while. Oh, let's say five or six of them. Can you hinge a little deeper? Is your weight on your heels? 
and then bust them out to a medium row. 45 degree row is my favorite. Chin tucked. How's that weight? If it's not too heavy, I can now go to a high row, which is my least favorite, but it's got its benefits. Oh my God, that's only halfway. Hinge up for a quick rest if you want. And bring it back down. Pick your favorite location. Is it low? Is it middle? Is it high? You're still hinged. I'm taking a break because I'm coach. Squeeze those scaps together. Making them work. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Squeeze your upper back together. Super good. I'm afraid you still got to hold them. We're going to. We're gonna pendulum squat them and then switch it to a push press at the halfway point. Pretty wild, I know. We're living on the edge. So feet pretty narrow. Feet pretty narrow for the pendulum squat. And then we will seamlessly, superhero-like, step them out to shoulder width over here in the cuckoo. Feel that heels. You guys keep swinging them. Here's my mantra right here. Right here you wanna be heels, hams, Hips, whom, heels, hams, hips, whom, wow. I love alliteration, I didn't know I got four of those. Heels, hams, hips, whom. All right, here's the superhero. Drop him here, push press. <clears throat> Abs controlled, weight on the heels. What a way to compare and contrast pendulum squats to push presses. Ha, wow. Always love to stop at the top. It's kind of a rest, but not really. Whether those pillows vertical or your shoulders super high, your abs and ribs controlled as your butt squeezed. Oh. All right, face pose. That's the grocery bag thing, or some small weights like bean cans or one pounders or two pounders. Your grocery bag choked up right to the handles, hinging down. Bring those elbows and thumbs up to the sky. Hinging it deep. These gotta be pretty light. Nice, you got your W going. Let me work that W. Notice the tendency to throw the head forward when that comes up. Train that out. Keep that chin tucked. Pull them back. All right, here's the game. Touch one or two, we've done a bunch, at the forehead. Now touch one at your chin. That's a lower W. And then touch one at your neck. That's a lower W. They're still good. Watching that thoracic. And now hold it up here and take them out overhead. Feel that scapular action. Oh, that's postural medicine, my friends. Seven seconds. Am I getting around in my thoracic? Are you getting around in your thoracic? I know you would never. All right, we're going to do a plank, punch, march. What? When you're down plank, I'm going to be way back here so I don't have to change my camera angle. Now plank up, this is number seven. Knees or toes, and then just punch overhead. Work on moving side to side as little as possible. Punch them right up. Keep that chin tucked and head controlled. This is your abs, number seven. Boom. Boom. When you're down, you keep going. When you're down, keep your forearms nice and parallel. Drive them forward so that you got those scaps forward without rounding too much. Although a little rounding the thoracic isn't bad here. Keep punching them. If you need to drop one knee, try dropping one knee and punch them like that. Keep your butt low though. Keep your lumbar controlled. Drop the other knee. Does that minimize your side to side motion? Drop both knees. Oh, that's much more reasonable. Still totally worthwhile. Big plank, we're almost there. Squeezing them out a little bit long. Take a breather. Round one is down. That was pretty fun. That totally worked. Walk it off, we'll be on to round two in about 48 seconds.
Well, what have we got for round two, Adam? I'm glad you asked. We have offset squats, which are surely a vibrant fitness favorite. I didn't invent them, but I sure use them a lot more than any other trainer I've seen. When you offset squats and step up lunge backs. Now we've done some offsets and I'll be nerding out on you with those, but let's jump to pair B and talk about our step up lunge back. I'll keep it the sideways because that's where a lot of the business is. Just assume and know, you can't see it, but assume and know that I'm trying to keep my feet at shoulder width. When I go to step up on that chair, there's a tendency to bring them too narrow. Don't do it, keep it out wide at shoulder width. Similarly, when I come down off of that chair and step back into a lunge, there's a tendency to go to a tightrope. If you've consciously chose that, that's fine, but the first thing you should do is have a well-trained shoulder width lunge. So, here's how it goes, watch how elegant this is. I stay close to the chair, I step up, squeeze that glute, I'm nice and tall, I come down here and I step right back into a perfect lunge. I don't wanna be too far back, I'm gonna be right there, and then I'm just like a machine driving that up. So you keep that same leg sequence until the halfway point, and then you'll switch them. This first round, we're not gonna use any weights. Did you see that cheat? Totally cheat that for balance. When you get to the top, always hang out a little bit, shift those hips forward and back, have fun with that. Not always, but I mean a couple of times. All right, you guys get it. So it doesn't matter which leg. I always try to say do, say do your weaker leg first, but both legs are working hard on this one. I'm not holding any dumbbells. I'm live in 12 seconds. I'm nice and shorter with these moves slow. If you want to start early, you can. Bring it right up, work your balance, bring it right down. Just because they move slow, don't think they're not gonna work you. You see that cheat? I like that cheat. I've never done that before. Touch my toe to the back of the chair. Touch my hands to the back of the chair sometimes. Little toe taps, kinda cool. Makes me real happy about my old school wood chair. This is your off season hiking and mountain climbing stay in shape move par excellence. Par excellence. Switch legs. Now the other leg's up first. Up we go. Has anybody paused yet to see how vertical you are? To see if that hips over those malleoluses? Or would they be malleoli, Karen? What do you think? Bring them down, drive it up. Super thoughtful, super cerebral, super precise. Eight seconds, you'll probably get one more cycle. We'll try these next time with some dumbbells. But it's time for offsets. With one dumbbell to curl. Offset squat is this setup. That's how it looks in the frontal plane, it's toe to heel. And that's the center plane, and over here is here. We're gonna curl as we squat. It's a one-legged affair. I'm training my left leg, while that right leg's as light as it can be, and kind of dancey. In fact, we're gonna move that around. It's light on its toe, and I'm gonna go right toe to heel. If I put the toe to the heel, that's exactly the offset I'm looking for. I get to challenge my tall spine here, I get to work on this hip mobility. I get to heckle my core by swinging this dumbbell. I'm gonna switch legs, dump them back. I don't know how many offsets you'd have to do in a day or a week to do too many offsets. I don't think you can do too many offsets. This is anti-aging material, my friends. Squeeze them down. Mm. Mix up that base of support. You could say this whole pair of exercises is one-legged heaven. Do you notice one-legged heaven? One-legged work is so good for us. I feel like I've died and gone to one-legged heaven. All right, I'm making it heavier. I'm gonna keep these right by my hips, which is hard to do. I'm not doing anything fancy with them. I'm just gonna come up, use them for balance, making a little extra load. Next time we'll curl them That'll make them a little bit fancier. Now, if this seems too easy, see if you can go a little more control on your way down. If you want to really challenge yourself, see if you 
can keep your attention on your pelvis and keep it level. Switch legs. In other words, as you're stepping up, your pelvis is walking all side to side and you're gonna make your job to keep that super level, which is gonna take you a lifetime to master. No, but a couple of years, probably, yeah? Has to do with squeezing abs, has to do with driving glutes, has to do with keeping shoulders back. Squeeze it up there. Bring it on down. Offset again. One dumbbell again. The third round, we're going to use two dumbbells. I'm going overhead now. I'm dumping into my left foot. Setting my right one super light. Ready to dance. There we go. Down and down. Up and up. Awesome opportunity for body mechanics check here. I can squeeze this glute to stabilize my spine. Control that lumbar arch, ribs down. What else am I doing? All kind of things, yeah. Let's go tight rope, toe to heel. See how that is. And then before we're out of time, try a couple in the curtsy where you actually step across. A curtsy offset squat. Switch them out. Side by side. Oh, happy hips. Happy hips, happy abs. Toe to heel. Tight rope. Two by four. Hold it. Has those ribs, has that collarbone, has that shoulder all the way up. And curtsy. Hmm. Hmm. Almost there. All right. So you know how happy those were last time. You know if you want the same ones or lighter ones. We're gonna now curl these bad boys. As they come up, I'm gonna curl them up. As I come down, they come down, and then I curl them again. Again, it's not so much about arm work as it is about heckling your balance and adding load to your amazing legs and hips. Nice lunge, Sarah, I got you in silhouette. You look like a video animation of a perfect lunge. Bring them on down, switch them out. There's your 90 90 lunge. You should see that in Sarah's silhouette. It's just perfect. Vertical shin, almost vertical back leg. Bring them up. Squeezing the abs, nine and eight. Has anybody stopped at the top lately? Stop at the top, maybe crank a few curls. Always worthwhile. All right. Woo, I promised it. Offset two bells curl press. I don't even know if this is a good idea. We game for this? Sink into that left leg. Curl them, press them, and uncurl them. Curl them, press them, and uncurl them. Ooh, all on that left foot. How about a tight rope? Hmm. One legged work. Core tight. Ribs controlled. Curtsy, anybody? Oh, that's pretty whacked. Switch them out. Right leg's doing the work. Curl. Press. Pause, rest, curl, press, pause, rest. Tight rope or close, curl, press, ooh, I'm falling. Pause, rest, curtsy, curl, press, pause, and rest. That is enough. Mountain climbers on the chair. Let's do these kind of precise and nerdy. This is our number seven. Then we get a break. <clears throat> now the chair is too easy. We should be on the floor, right? But we're going to super precise them. We're going to go straight, straight, twice, and then cross, cross, twice. Really working those abs. And then Spider Man, Spider Man, twice. Spider Man, Spider Man. Spider-Man, how's your chin position, how's your shoulders? Now, one leg goes straight, 
locks out glute squeeze, cross, locks out glute squeeze, Spider-Man locks it out, switch them out. I actually like Spider-Man seconds. So I'm gonna go straight, and then spider, hit that lockout, and then cross. Other leg, straight, and of course, you've got license. You can mix these up. You know what to do with your lumbar, with your adductors, with your head position, with your shoulder scapular position, with your breathing, that's a squeeze, squeeze. All right, that little core. Take a little breather, walk it off. We're gonna be on our fitness balls. The last round is all about your fitness ball. If you don't have a fitness ball, I'll know when I look at you and I'll tell you something else you can do without your fitness ball. Fitness ball and chunky dumbbells. We're gonna do a dumbbell chest press, a one dumbbell abs press, a ball push up, a ball bird dog, a ball roll out, and angel devils. Oh my God, that's a lot for the last round just to think about, isn't it? She's like, her head's spinning. What did he say? So the ball chest press is one of our favorites. What do you think, John? I said I just want the record to state that I haven't been watching you. I've been watching Sarah for her perfect <laughs> I have no problem with that. <laughs> I can totally prove that. All right, ball dumbbell chest press. We all know it. We all love it. We're going to do a couple of things because at home, you probably don't have as heavy of bells as you want. So when we get laid back on that ball where I'll show you, your first couple of reps are going to be nice vertical forearms with your elbows not too high, pushing that chest press. And because that's not challenging enough for you, you can either pulse them down there in their long position, or you can open them out carefully into flies. Chest flies, you do have to come down kind of slow with tight grips on your belts to keep the shoulders stable and smash like Hulk. Okay? I think we're only going to do one round of those, but we like them so much we might do two. And then we're going to... Um, Put one dumbbell on the floor and turn it into a dumbbell abs. So where we sit on the ball is critical here. I'm going to give you this profile. I started back here because I'm going to roll out until my head is just supported. I'm going to put this right up tall and bring them down. There's my vertical forearms chest press. These 12 pounders are too light, so I'm going to aim them towards each other a little bit. Palms aiming in. I'm gonna open it slowly and carefully towards the fly. Now that can be by degrees. You can start to angle those forearms out a little bit. And once you know you've got it and your shoulders are happy, you can go almost straight arms. It's not straight arms. I like a little bend in that elbow, but find those pecs, pulse them at the bottom if you feel mighty. Great way to actually feel the pec shoulder complement there. You're trying to get more into the pec, less into the shoulder, but both are in the game. See so you can feel that pectoralis major attaching to your sternum, your rib cage, even your clavicle. Clavicle? Who knew? All right, we're almost there now. This gets cool. Put one down, roll part way up. See this kind of casual hangout I'm doing here? I got my lumbar cradled in the, in the ball. I'm kind of pushing into it. This is gonna still press, but it's an abs machine. So I'm coming down, rotating my chest open, feeling that oblique, and then driving it up to the sky. Driving it up to the sky. Pretty cool stuff. You can really feel a lot of great things at work. Oh, I like that. Karen's got her hand back here. <laughs> it's also kind of cool. Put your feet under the couch or against the wall on this. Then you can really lock in and switch hands. Bring them down. I happen to know you've got a couch right there, John. It might work well next time we do this. Tuck those toes under there. You can really drive those abs with authority. Right to the sky. 
squeeze those abs, hold it at the top, pulse your oblique. Is that my oblique? Is there a really, really lumbar flexion? Yes, it is. I got abs, my friends. Woo! All right, you can do your dumbbell ball chest again. If you love it, do it, because I'm going to do ball push-ups, which not everybody loves. So if you're loving your ball chest press, do it. I don't know how you could not love ball push-ups, but here it is. On my knees for the first couple, notice I'm pushing on the side of the ball. I can't be on the top. This has to be aiming at me, stabilizing my core. Hands are out, squishing in. And if I'm on my game and my core stable and my shoulders feel good, I can raise my knees into a full length push-up. Totally attenuatable. Would it be attenuatable or would it be attenuable? This is not grammar class. It's a good question though. Attenuable. That means I can make it easier by letting my knees touch for this bottom difficult part. And I can attenuate it harder by raising the knees at the top. All the while, keeping my head back, stabilizing my shoulders, working that core. Nine, eight. Totally slow, control it, squeeze that ball. What do you got for scap stability? Oh yeah, all right. Ball bird dogs are not for the faint of heart. I'm gonna lay out here, I'm gonna squeeze the ball between my thighs and my elbows. So I'm kind of barely floating here, very unstable. I'm gonna kick my right leg out and my left arm out to the side. I can barely stay on this thing. Hold it for about a three count. Squeeze the elbows and knees together, and I'm gonna get the other side. This might be too many different things to put into one pair, but you are the A team, so we're doing it. You're targeting your glutes and particularly your low back. You're targeting your multifidae. Oh, say that again, what are you talking about? Multifidae, that's plural for multifidus which are the deepest spine stabilizing muscles in your back. And when you strengthen those multifidae, man, you can haul wood on your arm like that without even flinching or being nervous. How's your head position? How's your core? How's your straight spine? How's your glute squeeze? How's your cats? I haven't seen your cats all morning, man. <laughs> I <laughs> not while there is in this place. Work it out. All right, ball rollouts. <laughs> Standard affair, he's doing his abs. Just like this, out on the elbows, sawing them. Thanks, I needed that cat fix. And <laughs> now I got you both. And if you know who you are and you know how to do this, come on up full length, pike it a little bit, mess with it, stir it. This is one that you should do your best to love because I want you to do it until you're 106 years old because it really works. If you're controlling that lumbar, if you're not dished in that lumbar, if you can pike, if you can keep your shoulders forward, man, you're working functional core like even Frank the Cat couldn't do. Mix them up, make it yours. Jog your knees a little bit. It's really hard when it goes way out there. Squeeze that navel tight. Oh, that's so good. It's a little scary, but we know who we are. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, and, and. anterior chain hell. Corollary posterior chain hell is angel devils, which is a lot like YTAs, only it's worse. Oh, do you see that? I put my feet against the wall. Very legitimate cheat. All right, so I make a halo over my head, squeezing those together. I keep my entire upper back flat, back flexed, and I bring these out in a powerful flexed arc around to a halo over my butt, which is the devil in this exercise. And then I bring it back. And it's absolutely fine to pop your ribs a little bit here, overarch your lumbar. Well, try not to overarch your lumbar but you're really trying to take that kyphosis out of the spine. Keep that chin tucked. Feel the amazing motion of your scapula on your rib cage. Keep your upper back flexed, mid back flexed. Oh, we're working those things. This is not for the meek of heart. No dumbbells at all, but 
really work into that upper back. Chin tucked, head position. Eight seconds, put them where you like them. Squeeze them, pulse them. We're gonna collapse. Three, two, one. Ah. Let them stretch. Well, that's quite enough of that, huh? We do have time to do balls, chops. Ball chops is what I meant to say. And they're kind of cool. The ball's a little lightweight, but it's a good dynamic number seven. So come on up with this big ball. If you don't like your big ball, you can chop with a little dumbbell. But it's winter, we're gonna be chopping wood. So let's do it, and then we'll be done. We'll do stretches and mobilities. Pretty wide squat, squeezing that floor out, chopping. Squatting while I'm chopping. This is for your cardio and your core and your demeanor. Chopping them down with a ball or with a dumbbell. Looking good. Exhaling them out. How deep can you squat? Can you stay low and chop? Ooh, that's kind of wild. Six, five, four, three. We're gonna do those metal larks where we go side to side. Shoulders back, spine forward, and chop it the other way. It's funny, I think of the ball as kind of a wimpy thing to use compared to a dumbbell, and yet, it's totally worthwhile. Get them, chopping it across. Push your butt back, hand it down, do a low one, like you're trying to chop low. And take a break on that. Super good. Ballistic arm stretches. Feels like an athlete. That's what athletes do after a set or before they're batting right. Swing them a little bit like this. Grab them back, push them out, chin tucked. Antikyphosis. Turn those thumbs out, feel the shoulders and the pec stretching. And let's stretch that mid back, because man, we've worked it. Yoga shoulders, kind of a tall thoracic. We're gonna round that thoracic wicked. First move those through their range. And now take a big breath. You're gonna push your breath into the dome of your thoracic back and drive your elbows forward. Do that again. Come up tall, inhale. Hold your breath and push out. Super round in that thoracic. Yeah, good, good, good. And swing them. Nice super band, dude. And let's get the other one trapped under. Right there. And this side's always a little weirder for me. This is that weird left shoulder. And let's round that thoracic out. Big breath. This is a secret mid-back stretch move that always works. Do it again. Shoulders back a little bit and... Really push that round. Ah, that feels so good. Almost as good as straight, uh, rolling it on a foam roller. Not quite as good. Foam roller is amazing. And do we have time to get down quadruped? Cut me ten close. We do not. All right, let's call it good. I do encourage you all to stretch your glutes because we did about a hundred thousand squats. And um, thanks for being here. Super good to see every one of you. We'll be back for.